Oh god, the horror. No, please don't make us relive this, please. Uh, wait, what's that? Are they going to remake the movie? Thought you might like that. Is it going to be set in modern times? <sighs> All right, I have no choice here. Listen up, Universal Pictures, you have got a lot of work to do here. So put your listening ears on. Yes, yes, that's it. This video is your blueprint for this potentially phenomenal remake and correction on one of the most disastrous modern blockbusters. In 2002, the world watched Dwayne The Rock Johnson stumble left and right in his first attempt at a significant Hollywood role. He played Matthias, the titular Scorpion King, in a spin-off to the Mummy series. I don't need to remind you that the movie sucked, and just in case you forgot, here's the spoiler. The movie was terrible. Woo. Is this true? The Rock was almost out of Hollywood before his career began. Fast forward over a decade, and he's found his footing as a blockbuster star. Okay, not every movie that he's in is the gold standard of cinematic excellence. However, I think it's safe to say that he's made enough hits to be considered a safe bet for a hit summer movie. You have to respect the hustle and growth that he's shown. Now, the Garcia companies and their film studio are working to remake The Scorpion King. The two big honchos at the company, Danny Garcia and The Rock, clearly want to make this flick stick. And, well, the risk might work this time. It's good to be back in the big city. Seven Bucks Production and Universal see this as a full circle moment. This was Seven Bucks entrance into the film industry, and they want to take another crack at the story. It's important to note that these guys don't think the movie was that bad. Financially, that's true, but critically, they could not be further from the truth. The only thing The Mummy Returns and Scorpion King proved is that The Rock is popular with viewers, which is shocking because he won't be in this movie. Well, okay, let me correct myself. He won't be the star of the film because the guy is booked solid through the year 2022. He can easily manage a cameo or minor role, but he won't be the Scorpion King. Let's just make that clear now. Instead, reports confirm that Hiram Garcia and Dwayne Johnson will produce the movie together. They've even tagged Jonathan Herman to write the script. You might recognize his name from Straight Outta Compton, his first notable success. Herman's on his way to becoming a household name, and this film will be providing ground for his talent. You're not sold off of that, are you? Yeah, I can tell. These are just the facts for you to understand where things are currently. I can promise you, there's enough here to fix the original mistakes. It will all become clear in due time. As Evelyn Carnahan said, What I want everyone to understand is, Seven Bucks was super new to the game when they made the first Scorpion King. Over the years, they've adjusted their craft, and it's actually up to Universal to make sure this movie is a hit. The two of them need to work together. Their track record shows a movie by these two studios tends to come out reliable now. They haven't done every blockbuster property they've handled justice, but they're certainly more competent now. Hiram Garcia produced Hobbs and Shaw, Ballers, Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, and San Andreas. Those aren't Academy Award winning films, but they've made good money at the box office. Clearly, we, as a collective, liked those films. Herman wrote an Oscar-nominated screenplay, and The Rock has become the face of Hollywood in the summer. While he won't be the star of this remake, he certainly understands what parts worked. He faced the majority of the criticism after all, but I think we've stretched the point thin here. Let's shift focus and talk about the original Scorpion King and what mistakes are super fixable now. After all, this is where the real meat of the video is. I just want you to see this movie can be successful, given the team involved in the production. The first way they failed in 2002 was with the story itself. The villain's goal, the hero's journey, and even the romance all felt bland or forced. There's nothing remarkable about what happens in The Scorpion King. I could go plot point by plot point through the movie, and you wouldn't remember half of it. Don't worry, I promise I won't put you through that. I want you to actually enjoy this video. We don't need them to make things complicated. There's a story there. Herman and his team need to find a way to bring it authentically, and in a way that feels unique. Yeah. Ow. We want tangible conflict mixed with subtle notes of comedy. The Mission Impossible films are a great inspiration for this. The remake needs to create a specific goal for the protagonist that feels attainable. All they need to do is move the goalpost further and further until Matthias reaches the growth moment. After that, you wrap it up with a massive action piece we all go crazy for nowadays. 
I'm talking about a simple plot like Clash of the Titans. The root of the story is a classic Greek myth. The script takes that and drags it out by pushing the goal away from Perseus organically. Action, romance, and subtle comedic moments can make a basic action movie feel enjoyable. That's the least they can do to improve this movie. We fix the storyline and we already have a better movie. The plot is half the battle. That's why it's concerning to hear that this film might be set in modern times. We saw the Mummy remake attempt that concept and it went horribly. Contemporary Times is playing with fire, but there are ways to make it work. Again, the idea needs to be kept simple. Perhaps the descendant of Matthias lives in Egypt during the present day. His profession leads him to uncover this lost heritage, and some supernatural force awakens the Scorpion King's powers in him. We might then see this modern retelling connect to some kind of conflict in the past with a future scenario. Yeah, it sounds a bit like Assassin's Creed. Look, I'm not saying that's a great idea. It was the first one I could think of off the top of my head. The point here is the script needs to blend the mythos of the Scorpion King with modern conflicts, if they choose to use contemporary storytelling. Part of fixing the story is improving the comedy too. I don't know about you, but I'm not paying money to watch the Scorpion King become a farce. Make it rated R, or at least embrace the action and violence we expect from the character. Seven Bucks Production knows how to make comedy work in action films, and they need to take that work and blend it better here. You see the early attempts at their style in the original movie, but it doesn't work. Things that are supposed to be funny are not, and the things that are meant to be serious come off as comedy. From top to bottom, that's a failure at getting the tone correct. A lot of that stems from the director. The Rock and Hiram Garcia fixed that issue by choosing a great director for the style. Someone like David Yates or Gareth Edwards proved in recent projects that they can meet that requirement. Obviously, that's a bold request, but just get someone who matches their style, that's all. Finally, the studio needs to fix the visual effects and avoid any mistakes this time. To be fair, The Mummy Returns is the film that made The Rock look like a scrappy piece of claymation. Regardless, the CGI in The Scorpion King wasn't groundbreaking either. The film got some credit for its visuals, and they should lean on that again. We should see the cast in exotic locations, exploring dangerous locations, and getting into unique, visually appealing action sets. Well done visual effects can make all the difference here. Again, since 2002, the production company and Universal got their act together and tend to meet this requirement. There's the occasional hiccup, but nothing that shouts failure before launch. Without a doubt, these are the three biggest mistakes in the original Scorpion King film. Imagine what we might get if they cleaned up these monumental errors. Third point, bring it together. Inspiring the viewer here is the goal. Painting a proper remake and making the case that this should happen can bring the fans in for the ending. We want them to trust that what they heard came from a fan of this monster universe as they must be. If they're watching this, they want a new Scorpion King. And this point needs to keep them hooked for the outro by selling the potential and getting more detailed on how it could play out. Picture the desert framed in this epic scale with a bold, brave hero crossing it in hopes of changing the world. At its core, the Scorpion King is about a man who unites rebels against a tyrannical leader. A modern telling could connect the dark, accursed based tale of the Scorpion King with the current conflict centered around a band of rebels bound by a noble cause. It's been years since The Rock failed in this movie. Redemption won't come quickly, but the talent around him has grown with him. There are countless ways they can choose to go with this one, and I want to take the time to imagine different ways that they could tell this story. Perhaps they could make this film more of a monster movie. The Scorpion King is also a horrible monster locked away in the lost tombs of Egypt. We could get a film in the vein of Godzilla or Kong Skull Island, where a terrible scorpion-themed beast threatens the survival of our hero and the people he cares about more than anything. Heck, let's go full Predator, or Peter Jackson's King Kong, where some kind of mythos hunts a group of trespassers. They've got a chance here to reimagine the Scorpion King as a lost kingdom hiding out in the sands of time. Anyone who awakens it should feel some form of wrath, right? If those pitches don't get your imagination running, maybe take it back to a more straightforward route. Picture a film with the imagery of Sicario and the action sets of Black Panther. That's the kind of movie we could be in store for if things go right. Maybe they'll give us a narrative where two groups wage a battle that spans centuries. 
Maybe the main characters are an outside group stuck right in the middle of it too. You clicked on this video because you believe in what The Rock can do now in his current role. This remake can be the beginning of the next step. Here's a chance for them to prove they get what makes the modern blockbuster work. Odds are they will stick to their guns. The Scorpion King will be a soft PG-13 and include plenty of friendly comedy fitting for a general audience. The action sets will be outrageous, and the laws governing the movie's physics will be stretched. The Seven Bucks production company has a calling card at this point. As much as we want to see them break the mold, it probably won't happen. It doesn't mean the new Scorpion King remake isn't worth the hype, it just means all those different ideas for this movie's look and feel won't come to fruition. Playing it safe isn't a bad thing here, which would still improve the original movie. Just please do us a favor, if this one fails, don't make a bunch of straight-to-DVD sequels no one cares about, okay? Now, I'm not sure how to feel about this one still. Where's your hype level on Scorpion King's remake? Tell us in the comments below and like this video to keep up with updates. Oh yeah, it never hurts to subscribe to Screen Rant to keep track of all of our daily content. See ya!